Okay guys, so just in response to this question from Daniel in the BRICS community, uh, he was asking basically how you can use the interactions to use transform effects. Um, the uh, BRICS UI for interactions, the start animation is for the internal animations, not for custom animations. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to add your own custom, but uh, uh, I'm going to answer this specific question and the way to do it. Uh, and my initial answer here was because of the way Bricks prints out uh, CSS, uh, if a class is not used, it doesn't print the CSS, that you'd need to do it in an external utility. Since figured out a better way of doing that to keep it all in the same UI, so I'm just going to go through that and show you what I mean. So here's a blank page. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just don't duplicate this container, so I've got two containers. And in my first container, I'm just going to grab a icon, for example, and I'll duplicate that and stick it in my second container here. Okay, so just two containers with an icon in them. Uh, and I'm going to get a button and put it down the bottom somewhere here. Uh, there you go. Top will do. And we're going to use this as a hover. So I'm going to call this a hover button. Hover to move. Okay. All right. So there's our button. We're going to use that to hover to animate this icon here. Now the reason we put two in here is we're going to put utility classes on this top icon here that won't get printed in bricks unless they're actually used. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to start with a class, and I always start Bricks Utils with a B dash. So, so it's very easy for me to determine where it's been created. So B dash, and we're going to call this uh, Transform Base. Now this base is going to be for the CSS when we're returning back to not being hovered. So in there, I'm just going to set my style and go to my CSS and set an all of maybe 0.3 uh, seconds with an ease in and out. So that's for when it's returning, so when the mouse is away from, uh, from the item. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the base. Uh, I'm then going to create a transform. Uh, so I'm going to be... Uh, just thinking whether this would be a BIM block or a utility. For the moment, I'm going to treat it as a utility. So I'm just going to go B dash, um, and I'm going to call this transform uh, X20. So X by 20 pixels. Okay, so B transform X20 is going to be my utility class there. And that there, I'm going to use that for targeting, not for actually doing the transform. Then I'm going to create a third class here. And I'm going to put two dashes for the modifier and active. All right, so I'm just going to copy that entire. Whoops. Copy that entire class name there. So I've created three class names. What happened to that? Did I just take that off there? Sorry, my mouse is not... Oh, I didn't press the end key. Okay, so I've created three classes. Um, and now I've created the base. Uh, I can... I can uh, leave, I need to leave that on because if I don't have that applied to any element, uh, Bricks is not going to print the um, CSS for it. Uh, it's just part of the bricks optimization. So, uh, so I need to have this B transform X20 because that's what I'm going to use to target. Um, we may not need that because we're not actually going to put any properties on that, but that's okay. We'll just leave it on there anyway. And our active class. Right, on our active class, what I'm going to do is set my uh, transform to be an X of minus 20 pixels. And we're going to set the uh, all of maybe 0.6 seconds and we're going to ease out. So ease out of the animation. Okay, so all 0.6 seconds and ease out. So that's on the active class. Alright, so that's the um, 
classes. Now that we've got all of these classes applied to this icon, we're actually going to hide this whole section. So what I'd suggest you do is create icons or text headings or whatever you want to indicate what they are and put all of your classes on that and then we just hide the entire container when we're done. All right, so now the interaction. So what we're going to say is on this button up here, actually have we got that on there? Oops. We haven't. So we want to go back to this icon here and we're going to add the um, transform base. Okay, so that's our base starting point. And we want to add the transform um, X20, which does nothing yet. We're just using that for targeting. Okay, and then back over on our hover button, go to interactions, and we're going to select our trigger as mouse enter because hover only gives you the one state so we're going to go mouse enter and we're going to set an attribute of the class to the value of b transform x20 active modifier okay on the css selector is uh, what do we call it transform base oops so i think that's what we called it b transform base No, let's not use that. Let's use the X20 because we want to actually target just the X20 uh, elements. So we want to target the CSX, CSS selector of the items that have got the transform X20. And then we want to add the active class on mouse enter. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that and we're going to change that to be mouse leave and just change that to remove attributes. So it's basically going to add and then hide um, the uh, active element on these elements um, when we mouse and enter and leave. So if I save that, now these interactions, by the way, they don't work in the editor, so we need to view it. So if I now move, well, what's not happening here? Let's have a look. Okay, what have I done wrong? Okay, so this item here has B transform X20. You might just click on that and copy it. Most likely a typo. Okay, and on our hover me, we're going to target. On the mouse enter, mouse enter, we're going to target the B X20, and we're going to add the transform X20 active class to it. Why have I not got anything on here? Did it not save? Strange, it hasn't got the little dot next to it. So the mouse leave, remove the attribute of the class B transform active. The CSS ah. Here's my mistake. It's a CSS selector. I forgot to put the dot for the class. So it's a dot B, uh, B transform. So that was my mistake. All right. Now we can see, hover to move. We can see these happening. Okay. So what I would then do is probably hide that entire block. But let's do another one just to be uh, sure that we know what we're doing. So let's grab a different icon. I just set that to be a row so it makes more sense for us. There we go, so we've got that as a row, we'll do the same with this one. Oops, we're not selecting well here. Okay, so we're going to grab another icon here and we're going to change the. Oh, maybe we'll change that to a gear. Okay, and we'll on this one here. What do we got on there? So we've got transform base. So we're going to add our transform base. And let's create a new class here. And we're going to call that uh, B uh, rotate. Rotate um, infinite. 
Okay, and we've got to copy that. And then we're going to add a rotate infinite dash dash active. Okay, and our rotate infinite active, let's see what we can do with that. So let's go to our transform. I'm going to rotate. Sure, where we rotate here. I think it's around the X. So if I do a three, does that rotate? No, I think it's the Z. There we go. So we rotate three. So let's go 360. Okay, and I can't. I'm not sure where you set this. Where you can set it here. I, da, 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 da. I'm sure we can set the infinite here. Let me try uh, transform uh, three seconds infinite. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Okay, let's just do that three seconds. Just do this and we'll change it back. So. Uh, we just leave the transform three seconds. So we've got all those on there. It's going to duplicate that and drag it down here. We're going to take the um, active off and we'll just grab the class. Okay, we're going to add a button, duplicate that, hover to rotate. And on that there, we're going to change that to targets. Yeah, the value is going to be transform infinite. The target is going to be this infinite without the active. That looks right. Mouse leave. Okay, so let's see what happens with that. Okay, so we've got all those on there. We've got all those classes on there. And on here we have basically the transform base, so it's the returning back to and the uh, rotate infinite. Um, let's see what happens with that. So hover to move, hover to rotate. There we go. Hover to rotate, hover to move. All right, now I'm just going to check here. I'm not sure. If we can add all oh, two seconds is in I don't think this is going to work here no so I'm not quite sure how we'd make this infinite here uh, where can we add the infinite uh, CSS Transform infinite. There's a question here. Let's have a quick look. It's animation. So we'd have to use an animation, not a transform. Um, yeah, okay, so we can't do that with the transform. We'd have to do it as an animation, which means you'd have to add some CSS. So let's say we just use it, leave it at that, and we'll just call that uh, ease uh, out, uh, and make it say five seconds. Okay, hover to rotate. There we go, it's rotating. 
then it zooms back. Okay, hover to move, it moves. Now what I'd say, because what we need to do is that with these ones up here, um, we need those there because the Transform Base, Transform X20, uh, Transform X20 Active, um, actually, no. So on these, the Transform Base and Transform X20 um, are going to be on those anyway because we're going to target them, so Bricks will print those out. But the Active class, the Active Modifier, won't get printed unless we put it onto a widget. So probably the easiest thing to do is just add them all to um, either titles or matching icons or whatever in a group like this and then just call that your um, hidden classes for print or something like that and then what we'll do is in the content we'll just tell it to uh, set the display to none. So it's hidden the elements that we're using that are just there so that's that bricks pricks out uh, prints out the uh, classes here we go so hover to move moves hover to rotate rotates hover to move move hover to rotate rotates um, you would then look quite simply if you wanted to duplicate this so we've got a second one there we wanted to duplicate that we want to duplicate that uh, hit the save you can see that they'll all work. So they'll hover to move or hover to rotate. So that's how I would do it. Um, it's a little different to how I thought initially I'd do it. Initially I thought I'd create these um, classes in an external framework or something like uh, WP Codebox or Scripts Organizer. Uh, but thinking about this, you can just say add them here, hide those elements, and then uh, they're ready to use. So that's the way I'll do it. I hope that's uh, useful and uh, answers the question. And if you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.